okay. Do right, left, forehand, backhand. Okay. Okay, focus on the recovery with crossover step. So. Can you stay behind the service line? Exactly the same and close your eyes. Yeah. It's hard to split up in the middle. Don't you don't have to see. Just count the steps. It's hard, I understand when you close your eyes. But the reason to do all this exercise is for you to count how many steps you need from a center to go quarterly, to go fully to the corner. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, when you go back, you know exactly how many steps you go back. Yeah. So you, you do it so many times, so you do it more efficiently. Okay, so do it four times forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand. Count the steps. Okay. Maybe count split step, one, two, and swing. Uh, so are we going all the way over there? Okay, what did I say? How many um, steps? Two. How? Split step, one, two, step, hit. Okay. Okay, so do it for how many times? Four. Four, okay, show me. Regular, open your eyes, regular. That was four steps. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, show me two steps. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Do you understand? Yes. Do exactly the same with closed eyes. This is very, very good what you did. You did it identically close eyes or open eyes. I don't think you, you ever done that before. You done it before? No. Okay. When you close your eyes, what do you think? Um, split stop, right, left, hit. Split stop, right, left, hit. Okay. So this is more to yourself, right? Which is nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it. You're focusing on that part. Yeah. So I think, and I'm confident you understood how to do that. Yes. Okay? I want you to do one more time with closed eyes, and I want you to picture a scenario mm -hmm. that you picture the opponent on the other side. Oh. You picture, like, you know, where to hit the ball, cross court, down the line, you play oh. high ball. Oh. Do you understand? Yes. Let me see. Okay. My question to you after that it was good. Okay. Did you swing every ball the same or you change? The first three I hit normally. What's normally? Like uh, a medium speed. Medium speed, like what percentage? Um, if like that takes 60. 60? Yeah. Okay, and then the fourth one? Um, like 75. Okay, can you do it one more time and 
you don't have to tell me which one, which swing was slow or fast. Okay. I want to see difference of the acceleration. Uh. Uh. Close your eyes, okay? Uh. Okay. What do you do? The first one, I swing 80%, then um, 60%. How much? 60. 60, okay. And then I hit 80, 80, 80. I, I saw that. I respect that. Okay. Did you you think like that, that kind of pattern, or just happened to be? I thought. You thought, okay, so what's your end result, why you did that? So first I hit it deep to the corner to the opponent, so he gives me a high one. I gave him a short angle, he gave me one, I hit a really hard one. And Where then do you hit the hard one? What? Where do you hit the hard one? Cross court. Okay. And then he hit it back, and then I hit a cross court, and he hit um, with an angle. So you play only cross court? Yes. Fair enough. Again, it's nothing right or wrong. You can tell me down the other line. I'm okay with that. It's for you to have some clarity what to do. Yes. Can you do the same exercise in your room? Yes. How? <laughs> you find the room that has space. Not in your room. No. You cannot do it in your room. No, when it's too small. Even better, why? What? Why? <laughs> How much room do you need? Like this much? That's max. You just close your eyes. You don't have to get like, you know, swing the racket. Just have your racket in your hand. Picture it. Take your grip. You do this. You do this. You do the valley. You do drop shots. Do you mm -hmm. understand? Yes. That's the next level. Mm -hmm. That's called visualization. Yes. Just go in a quiet place or a very loud place, okay? Because sometimes you get distracted when the weird noises. When you have people playing next door, next court, they make sounds, they screaming, you get distracted. Yes or no? Yes. Everybody gets distracted in your age pretty much. Mm -hmm. Even the older kids. So try to condition yourself how to eliminate any distraction. Yes. Sometimes when the place is very, very quiet and silent, you don't know how to deal with that. Yes. It happens. So find your own space that you feel comfortable when you're not comfortable. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Can you do it one more time? Yes. Let's practice the either standing, mm -hmm. okay, and then closing your eyes and have your racket and try to maneuver it. Uh, so okay. like this? Like yeah. that? What do you think about it? <laughs> so first I did a forehand cross court and then a backhand down the line and then I f did a forehand cross court and then a backhand cross court. Okay, fair enough. So I'm trying to give you some ideas how to practice like something that tactics you, you're going to use. So if you practice every day for a little bit, five minutes, three minutes here and there, when you come to the court, it's easier to execute it. Yes. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yes. You understand? Yes. Don't always expect to have a tennis court to practice this mindset part. Yes. It's going to help you a lot to have more clarity on your tactic, what to do. Understand? Yes. Again, I never, I didn't tell you where to hit the ball, what to do with it. You create your identity. You build on that. There's nothing right or wrong or shaft selection. You decide to go cross court, you go decide to go down the line. Okay, go for it. 
but you have to be accountable for it. If you miss it, you can say, okay, I'm going to do next time better movement with my footwork. Yes. I'm going to get more under the ball so it doesn't hit the tape of the net. Yes. If you make the shot, okay, that's great. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yes. So this part, the visualization we just practice, is the most important part and powerful part for the young kids because is training them to have the muscle memory physically for the arms, for the legs, and also the muscle memory for the brain. That they have to do something on their own pace. Nobody's telling them how fast to move, nobody's telling them where to hit the shot, they visualize. And on their own, they can practice like at the match point, they can practice how they feel under pressure. So they build you know, that, they try to improve it. And that's the best way to improve any kind of healthy discomfort on their own kind of fear. Because everybody has kind of weakness and strengths, but they don't want to face their weakness loudly. And so on their own pace, giving them the room to do it is very, very powerful what they can do with their mind.